If your school district refuses your request for an independent educational evaluation, they are required without unnecessary delay to initiate a due process hearing. And Julie, the purpose of that hearing is to basically defend their own evaluations in front of a hearing officer. So that's what they're required to do. They don't always do it, but what, what panics many parents is when they actually do do it. And then they get the paperwork that yeah. says, we are engaging a due process hearing and you need to do X, Y, and Z on a piece of paper that you say, oh my gosh, what have I just done? Yeah, and so some parents don't realize when they ask, probably most parents re don't realize when they ask for an independent evaluation that the school, if they refuse it, is required to take this next step. And so it can feel like they're being retaliated against. And so what you need to understand, don't panic, okay? Um, <laughs> it's probably a good time, um, an excellent time, to pick up the phone and try to talk to a parent's attorney in your estate because this is an area where Many school districts, when they take this step, and it is a very formal legal step, bring in their lawyer. And if you don't have counsel or haven't even consulted with somebody, it's, a, it's you know, really you're at a disadvantage. In most situations, you can, however, if you decide, look, I didn't want to un un unleash the storm. I don't want to get into a hearing with my school district. I don't want to have this, mm. this be a big fight. I no longer want this evaluation. If this is what's going to happen, I don't want it anymore. You should be able to, prior to the hearing going to the level where people are taking testimony and actually, you know, proceeding with the evidence, you should be able to withdraw your request for the evaluation. This again gets very complicated and that's why I think it's very important that you're talking to an attorney before you take any formal action because there's terminology that, that is in effect here about whether the request is withdrawn with prejudice or without prejudice, meaning yeah. you can ask for it again or not. Some school districts will ask parents to take the stand and say they now agree with the evaluation the school did, which I think is not only unlawful if it's not true because it would be perjury, but it's really not an appropriate use of the procedures. But you've really just ratcheted up the, t the acrimony here and it's a good time to be talking to an attorney because if that evaluation that you requested is not essential from your perspective to proceed that you really really want it then you you really want to make sure that you withdraw that request um, in a way that protects you and your child's rights and that would be what I would want to for you to know as the upshot that yeah. if you've changed your mind yeah. that you can in writing um, withdraw your request mm -hmm. for your independent evaluation and you just need to know that you can do that yeah. I think that was the the whole point of, of what we wanted you, you to know. Can, and, and you also can consider talking to your school district. I mean, your school district's options at this point are to actually proceed with that hearing too, and they may not want to do that either. So maybe this is a good time for a negotiation, for you to pick up the phone and say, okay, I've asked for it, you've initiated the hearing. I know I'm legally entitled to choose who does it, but how about as a compromise we mutually select someone? Because the right. school district may be about to spend a lot of money on their attorney's fees defending this, and for the cost-benefit analysis for them, it may just be least, less expensive to go ahead and agree on the right. outside evaluation. But I also like your tip, Jen, to make sure that if you are able and your state um, has special education attorneys, this might be a, a point where you just want to pick up that phone and, and get an opinion from a special education attorney as well. Well, 